Hey collectors, Anthony from Hashersnet here, and today we are going to check out Transformers Legacy Prime Universe Knockout. Originally a Decepticon medic, Knockout switched sides when he realized that the Autobots would appreciate him more. Egotistical, perhaps not to the same level as Trax, Knockout admired Earth ground vehicle mode, something that the Autobots primarily utilize. When we get back, we will scope out this Decepticon medic. And this is Transformers Legacy Prime Universe Knockout. He is one of my favorite characters from the Prime series, uh, RC and Bulkhead, of course, being the others. I'm happy to get an interpretation in a kind of a G1 aesthetic. So that, that makes me super happy to get this guy. And um, before we look at him, and in case you're wondering, yes, he is a remold of Studio Series Jazz. Let's take a look at his box. So his box is a typical Legacy box. Uh, he's, Pad panel has him on it, the back has it, a QR code if you want to look at the uh, bio. And inside the box is, it was uh, oddly enough, no insert here, but still plastic ties, so that was weird. But of course the cardboard, uh, the instructions, and the don't hurt yourself paper. So, you know, remember, don't hurt yourself. So Knockout is the Decepticon medic, and um, at the end of the series, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm out, and they end up joining the Autobots, which is just prime. <laughs> anyway, yes, uh, again, a general remold or modification of the Jazz Studio Series mold, and it's kind of fine, because everything's from Studio Series 86 to Legacy slash um, War... Uh, War of Cybertron have all pretty much crossover mold wise. So unlike the typical studio series, there's really no differentiation between uh, any of the three series I just mentioned. He does come with uh, his Triton, which uh, is separatable and actually comes in two parts inside a little piece of paper that was in the box. Um, this doesn't turn, this doesn't come apart, this doesn't turn, this doesn't come apart. They're all, they're just literally these two pieces. And he can hold the Triton bit, or the tip, I guess, as something like that. And he can hold the other the staff as a gun. So some multifunction out of it. But other than that, I just think it looks cooler as the staff itself. And for clarity, there is this uh, little peg here. Uh, so when you put it in here, this peg needs to stick out. And it snaps into place. Uh, so make sure that's the way you connect it. The instructions weren't super clear about it, and uh, so I hate looking at the instructions. So, uh, back to him. So his transformation, fairly simple. Uh, fold in the hands as one does. And we can we can kind of go top or bottom on this, and anybody who remembers the jazz mold, the transformation is pretty much the same. So if we stop, uh, start at bottom, uh, we push in the toes, and then we can turn the uh, fender here to kind of fill in the back end. And uh, I think it actually looks pretty good. I mean, sure, it could use more paint apps, but uh, generally for like a, a car, for any type of detail, that's actually not too bad. Uh, it does snap in, at least mine does, like really tight. And you can hear that click. Uh, feet fold in, or I should say legs fold in. And uh, we're gonna play with the waist a few times, so we're just gonna leave it like this for a sec. Uh, pull up. Now this piece here is what tapped into down here. We're actually going to flip that around and then flip this back piece around, making sure that this is out of the way. Uh, people are, I guess people have had issues with this on the jazz mold breaking. So you probably don't want to um, flex this too much if you don't have to. But while we're here, you can pull out the back window and fill in the gap here. And you can kind of just leave the doors out like this. Uh, so anyway, as we are back over here, just make sure we straighten out the waist, which we've turned the other way. And of course, the legs are positioned this way. And um, we are going to swap the head through here. And this piece will come down and we'll pull the head through. And then this piece will go up to fill the hole in the, the roof here. Uh, when we're done, the head will, you know, the little neck piece here will fill in the rest of it in the window. So it'll all make sense in a minute. So we fold in the tires here and they just do a nice round 80. See this piece with the peg on the hand? This needs to be on the outside. It also gives his head broom inside of the bottom of the car here. So we just make sure we position this. Uh, these pegs actually will be clipped to the doors to kind of keep things together. 
So you can already see where we're going. There is not much more to do. Uh, we slide in the front window here, slide in the back, and uh, then all we have to do is put these pegs into the door here and kind of line up some of the door frame. And uh, it's hit or miss. Uh, you know, that side's perfect. I you know, always get the, I mean, the on-camera stuff happens and then I'm like, huh, why on camera? Uh, it just happens to work on camera. But uh, yeah, this one, oh, well, there it goes. And kind of just line things up. Uh, as you see, this fender came off a little bit in the order here. And uh, there we go, tuck things in. There's a little bit of gappage on this one for me. Uh, but results may vary as they always do. Um, and I realize that while Hasbro may have a specific focus at certain factories and people are saying Vietnam, Korea, or whatever, uh, not all of them produce the same level of quality, but this is actually pretty freaking good. And uh, man, I just dig the car mode. And of course you can mount this uh, together or separately. I'm just gonna stick it up here. I think it looks kind of cool. And uh, who likes Trident? I do, I do. <laughs> Reference to an old commercial. Anyway, rolls pretty good. It's just very stylish and flashy as Knockout has prone to be. And that that is a spectacular little car. Knockout, Alita One, and Bulkhead are my favorite Prime characters. Despite the naysayers out there, I dig the G1 aesthetic. It allows the figures to fit well within my existing War for Cybertron Legacy and Studio Series 86 collections. With that said, tell me in the comments your thoughts on this action figure. Did you get it and how was your experience with it? Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.